Well, welcome back, folks. Today's shop talk is not going to be motorcycle related. Rather, we're going to talk about my welder and some work that I've got to do on this unit. I bought this unit new about uh, nine, ten years ago. It's a very good quality unit. It's Lincoln, as you can see. It's a 240 volt MIG. That is uh, a wire feed welder that does use gas. You can see the bottle back here in the upper left corner. And it's had a moderate amount of use, I would say, over the years. Uh, I don't use it uh, every week. Uh, I'm not even sure I use it every month, but I use it probably half a dozen times a year. And what I've noticed recently when I was using it, using it for some repairs uh, that uh, the fan motor, which is uh, down underneath here, and we'll take a little closer look at that in a moment, the, the cooling fan uh, was, uh, be has become uh, reluctant to spin up. It, uh, it's become quite noisy on spin up, and it seems to be uh, a little bit on the lethargic side. So I think that the fan motor, the cooling fan, needs to be replaced. Uh, it eventually, the fan does eventually come up to speed and everything works fine, but I'm, I'm believing that one of these days uh, it's, it's not or something else is going to go wrong. And I'm going to have to replace it anyway, so I'm trying to get ahead of the curve here and be a little proactive. So my plan here is to remove that fan and verify, in fact, uh, it does seem to be defective. And... Uh, order a new one. I'm not going to order the new one until I take the old one out and can take a look at it. That's a little uh, different than how I normally go about things. Usually on something like this I'd order the new part before I take out the old one. I'm not planning to use the welder over the next uh, couple of weeks anyway so I thought I'd get to see if I could get this apart and take a look at that fan. It probably has a sealed bearing so it's really not much I can do to repair the fan uh, outside of just replacing it as a unit. The uh, challenge, uh, if there is one with this, is it's very modular and everything's built, very much built in. And I'm going to have to, you know, really take this significantly apart to get at that fan uh, so that I can uh, get it out. But before we do that, let me uh, show you what it sounds like when it spins up. I'll reposition the camera here and uh, see if we can't get uh, a shot of it trying to start. Now this welder has not been run in probably five days or so, four or five days. So it's been sitting for a, a while. And that's usually when it manifests itself, when the unit is being used like during the course of the day and I might turn it off a couple of times during the day uh, it doesn't create much of an issue it's when it's been sitting for a while that I'll notice that reluctance to spin up so let me reposition the camera here and uh, we'll start it up you can see what happens so I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on and let's see what kind of sound it makes Do it again. It might it, uh, it might start up a little smoother this time. It's about the same. I don't know if you noticed that little hesitancy at the start and gave a little bearing noise. It's actually better than what sometimes it sounds like. Sometimes it was sitting for a, a month or two. It really sounds rough like it's struggling to start and I think you probably could just hear that bearing sound and that little bit of reluctance so again I'm pretty confident that there's something wrong with the fan. Uh, let's take a look here quickly at some of the documentation I'm working with. Fortunately this unit came with a parts list and uh, it's part of the owner documentation and in here is a pretty well designed uh, series of drawings that shows all the various parts and the fan for this unit is right here which is number five and there are two different fans that are used depending on which model uh, welder you have so I've already figured out what the part number is and I have looked it up and it is widely available so getting a fan for it I'm not expecting to be any problem whatsoever 
Uh, Price-wise, it's, uh, well, depending on where you buy it, it's anywhere from 35 to 40 U.S. dollars or so. Uh, if you buy a OEM part, that is from Lincoln-made part, rather than go aftermarket, probably an Asian-made, uh, I'm going to go with a Lincoln uh, part. Just, if I'm going to get in here and do all this work, I want to make sure I have a good fan uh, that I'm replacing it with. I also found online uh, repair service uh, documentation for this unit. And you can see here it says uh, fan motor assembly removal and replacement procedure. And it's, uh, it's three or four pages. Again, this is online. It's supplied by Lincoln. Gives uh, some instructions of how to get it out. In order to remove this uh, fan, I have to pull the circuit board out here. First, I have to take everything off, I should say. The gas uh, tank has to come off. The spool, which is on the uh, welding wires on the other side of this red partition here that splits the unit in half, that has to come off. The circuit board here has to come off, so I have to take all the wiring loose. And you can see I've already started to tag all the wiring, and I've taken photos of that, so I know exactly what wire goes where. So this all has to come apart. The knobs on the front of the unit have to come off. Uh, these gas connections and wire connections on the back of the unit have to come off so that I can get this, this plastic tray here out to get at the fan, which is down here. So there's a fair amount involved. And uh, you can see this, this is that tray right here that they allude to, and then the fan comes out. There's also a separate set of instructions right here that this first uh, document references, and that is uh, the control board removal and replacement, and that's the control board right there. So that has to come out first, and they do provide a separate set of instructions, um, fairly nicely detailed with tools required and uh, the procedure you have to go through to remove that circuit board. That's the plan. Now, I'm not going to show all the work that's going to go on in here. Um, for one thing, I might be doing it over a period of time. I'm going to fit this in among some other things. So, uh, I'm not sure when I'd be even able to shoot the video. But first thing I'm going to do, is obviously, is remove the tank and the uh, spool of wire, start taking it apart. I will bring you back uh, later on, somewhere along the way. I'm not sure yet where as I get further into it and certainly on the other side we'll talk about um, what, uh, what, what happened. In other words, did I go ahead and replace the fan or was it not the fan or something else going on? I'm pretty sure it's a fan though by the sound of it and uh, we'll, we'll update you at that point. It could be a little while um, so I'm going to have to you know grow, group this video together in segments. Um, this might be spread out actually uh, from practical perspective, the work itself over a week or two because I have to order the new fan and all of that kind of thing. So we'll bring you back at some point a little well, bit. Well, it's about four or five days later, and as you can see, I have the welder apart. The instructions that I referenced earlier right here that are provided, these are allegedly the factory service instructions, are totally inadequate. They uh, clearly are designed and targeted at someone who has experience working with this kind of equipment. And to attempt to follow these to take that unit apart is equivalent to attempting to use a compass to find an address. It might point you in a general direction you need to go, but it's missing all the detail necessary to get to your destination. It actually took me probably, oh, an hour and 15 minutes or so to take this apart. You can see all the wiring there I had to tag. So I, I tagged everything and took photos of it so I know uh, the numbers that you can see in the reference uh, information I put on those wires will make sense to me when I go back and look at the, the photos I took. And uh, that took quite a bit of time actually because there's quite a, bit of, quite a bit of wiring in there. Uh, and then figuring out these la locking tabs, there's locking tabs on each side of this tray. And they're very well hidden, so I had to study it for probably 
10 minutes and try a couple different things before I figured out finally how those locking tabs release that upper tray from that, that metal plate. You can see a metal plate right there. It's actually U-shaped, that plate. It sits up like that. And the tray, that plastic black tray, snaps down over the top. There's fingers there, which you can't quite see. But they're very well hidden up underneath. And eventually, obviously, I figured it out. But uh, it took some studying a few minutes to, to get there. These instructions, all, the, all they say is uh, release tabs. It doesn't really even give you a lot of details. It's got a couple arrows that points down to here. And that's the extent of it. But we got through it. Uh, the fan, and here is the fan, and come to find out this is a uh, Chinese made, very commonly used apparently, fan. It's uh, used across a lot of different pieces of equipment, a lot of Walders in fact, not just Lincoln, but the other brands use it as well. And these are available all over out there. And I think as I indicated also earlier, for, uh, by a Lincoln supplied part is uh, thirty forty dollars something like that U.S. dollars. And once I knew the specifications of the fan, you can see it right there, some of the nomenclature. And I did label this old so that I know which is old and which is new. I ordered the new one and had it like three days or so, and here it is right here. And it's an identical fan. This I ordered from a very large electronics supply house here in the U.S. They're based out of the state of Minnesota. And delivered, this was uh, around 20 U.S. dollars, so it's approximately half the price of the OEM fan, which is uh, the identical fan. So again, here's there's uh, the new one on the bottom, and there's the old one on the top. And I labeled it just so I didn't get them confused. You can see there, so... Got the fan. In the next day or so, I get a little break in um, some of my other projects. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. The fan will go in first, of course, back here. And then I have to just start putting it all back together using the uh, photos that I took. I took a lot of photos and, and uh, referencing, of course, the labels on the wiring. Up there, you can see the, the tools that I used over here. I just left them in place, and then that, of course, is a circuit board that's all potted in uh, epoxy, and that fits on top of this section of the black plastic tray. And of course, there's the upper handle I had to remove to get at everything. So probably tomorrow I'll start. It's uh, well into the afternoon here, and I think tomorrow morning I'll come out when I'm fresh and start putting this back together. Well, there it is. It's all back together. I finished assembling it a short time ago. I started on first thing this morning. It took me probably an hour or so to put it back together. I took my time, made sure everything was exactly the way it was originally. Uh, looking at my detailed photos that I took during the disassembly, I have tested it and it works fine and I'll turn on the unit and you can hear the fan spin up. Much quieter than the original unit. It went together actually easier than it came apart. Uh, probably because I knew more about what was going where when I put it back together. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the covers on it and we're going to consider this little project a wrap. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.